live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here at the Orange County Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined by Aisha Gundas. She is a professor at the University of Florida College of Engineering. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So congratulations are in order because you. you are a, an Abbey Award winner, which is awards given out by the Anita Borg Institute, and you have been given the Denise Denton Emerging Leader Award. So tell us a little bit about, about your award. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, Grace Hopper and Anita Borg work throughout the conference. Uh, but Denise Denton, she was actually very close friends with Anita. And uh, she was a leader in her field. Her field uh, was um, uh, development of polymers and she worked on the, the first development of the uh, RAM. Uh, but she was actually uh, the first ever Dean of a College of Engineering at a major university first in the United woman States. Yes. Dean, first yes. of all, a woman yes. dean. Yes. Uh, so she became dean at the University of Washington, and then she actually became chancellor at uh, University of California. But uh, just beyond her research, she really promoted and lifted the people around her. So she was a big pro proponent of uh, minority issues. So she supported females, she supported international students, and she was openly gay, so she really uh, had a big influence on the LGBTQ uh, community. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, you know, just recognize her and say that how honored I am to have my name mentioned alongside hers. Uh, this award is given to a junior faculty member uh, that has uh, uh, done uh, uh, significant research and also has had an impact on diversity as well, and uh, so let's Denise is a great inspiration. Yes, no, and, and the, the award given in homage to Denise. So, so your research is, uh, is about detecting neurological disorders. So right. tell our viewers a little bit more about, about what you're doing. Uh, sure, so I'm an electrical engineer by training and who does brain research for a living. So this confuses a lot of people, but I basically tell them that our uh, brains have bioelectric fields that generate biopotential signals that we can record and we're really trying to decipher what these signals are trying to tell us. Uh, so we're really trying to understand and treat neurological disorders as well as psychiatric disorders. Uh, so I work with a lot of neurosurgical patient populations that receive electrode implants as part of their therapy. And we're trying to now improve these technologies so that we can record these brain signals and decode them in real time so that we can adapt uh, things like deep brain stimulation uh, for the uh, current pathology that these patients are having. So deep brain stimulation currently is working like, um, think of an AC and it's working on fan mode. So it's current, you know, constantly uh, blowing cold air into the room, even though the room might be, you know, just the perfect temperature. So we are basically trying to listen to the brain signals and only deliver electricity when the patient is having a pathology. So this way we're basically turning the AC onto the auto mode so that once they're actually not having symptoms, uh, unnecessary electrical city is not delivered into their brains. So, um, so pacemakers, when they were invented, were uh, functioning that way. So people realized they can stimulate the heart and the, the person would not have a cardiac arrest, but now we know that we can detect the, the heart pulse very easily, so then someone thought about, okay, so when we don't detect a pulse heartbeat, let's only stimulate the, uh, the pacemaker then. So and that's what we're trying to adapt to the neurotechnologies. And what, and what is the patient response? I mean, I imagine that that's, a, that's incredible. I mean, so these are people who suffer from things like Parkinson's disease, Tourette's syndrome. What, what, I mean, it's a small patient population that you're working with now, yeah. but what are, what are you finding? Uh, so, uh, first of all, our patients are very gracious uh, to volunteer uh, for, our, uh, you know, for our studies. Uh, we find that, uh, for instance, in Tourette's syndrome, we can actually detect when people are having tics, involuntary uh, uh, tics, uh, that is characteristic of Tourette's syndrome. Uh, we find that we can differentiate that, that from voluntary movements, so we can really deliver uh, the stimulation uh, when they're having these symptoms. So this is a paroxysmal disorder. They really don't need continuous stimulation. Uh, so that's one thing we're developing. Uh, we find that in essential tremor, uh, again, when people aren't having tremor, we can detect that and then stop the stimulation and only deliver it when necessary. 
Uh, we're working on a symptom called freezing up gait in Parkinson's disease. So people define this as the uh, having to will the, to walk, but they feel like their feet are glued to the floor. So this can cause a lot of falls, and at that really uh, age, uh, it, this can be very, very uh, dangerous. Uh, so we can actually tell from the brain when people are walking, and then we turn the stimulation in this particular area only during that time, so as to prevent any falls that might happen. So, so this is so it's really changing their their life and how they are coping with this disease. Yes, true, and it uh, it, it really makes going to work in the morning uh, very very uh, exciting for us. So another element of the of the Abby Award is that you are helping improve diversity in your field and 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 in Denise Denton, in the spirit of Denise Denton, right. uh, helping young women and minorities rise in in engineering. Yes, uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about this in my in the in the keynote session tomorrow. Uh, but I really just uh, realized that all my confidence in uh, throughout engineering school was due to the fact that I actually had a female. Uh, undergraduate advisor, uh, and uh, once I came to that realization, I uh, joined the Association for Academic Women at the University of Florida, uh, which was established in 1974 because these pioneering women fought for equal pay for male and female faculty on campus, and this is uh, still honored today, uh, so I'm very uh, honored to be uh, serving the association as its president today. Uh, all of our membership dues go to dissertation awards for female uh, uh, doctoral students that are uh, you know, emerging scholars in their fields. Uh, and I also approached the National Science Foundation uh, and they supported the funding for me to generate a new emerging STEM award uh, for female students in the STEM field. So. Uh, you know, that is my contribution. So you're passing it on, the, I, the, the I hope help so. and the mentoring <laughs> that you received as a young faculty member. You're, I, I, you're I truly sure. hope so. Yes. I mean, is, is how, how, right now we're so focused on the technology companies, but on the campuses, on the, on the undergraduate and graduate school campuses, how big a problem is this, would you say? Uh, so I'm a faculty in the biomedical engineering, so in our field we actually uh, have some of the highest female uh, to male ratios compared to other uh, engineering fields. Uh, people attribute this to the fact that females like to contribute to the society, so they like to work they on like to problems. Solve problems. Yeah, right. they, they, they like to work on problems that have a societal impact, and I think working with uh, basically uh, you know disorders. Uh, uh, in any uh, branch of uh, medicine uh, is, um, you know, it, it really fires, uh, fires up female students. But yes, when we go to other departments such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, the ratio is really, really small. Uh, and it still is a problem and uh, therefore we're really trying to mobilize, uh, you know, all female faculty just to be present. Just the, the fact that you're there, that you're a successful female in this field, the role really, models. yeah, really makes an impact. Uh, you know, I think the most um, repeated quote uh, at this meeting is that you can't be what you can't see. So we're really trying to support female faculty. So we're trying to retain female faculty so that you know the younger generation of females can see that they can and they will do it as well. <laughs> you can't be what you can't see. I yes. love that. That's those are words to live by. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Aisha. This is a pleasure, pleasure meeting you, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much, pleasure's mine. We'll be back with more from Grace Hopper just after this.